the Bible up here anyways, but I usually write all my scriptures on paper, it's just easier for me. So, um, <laughs> um, I, I, I love these uh, conspiracy shows or whatever, and they're fun for me to watch. I don't really take much of them seriously, but they're just, it's like watching TV for me. So it's kind of ex- exciting to watch these things. And uh, <clears throat> recently, 50 years ago, I don't know if you know this now, 50 years ago, uh, we landed on the moon. Did you remember that? Yeah. So, uh, so if I was to give a title to my sermon, I'd call it "Jesus on the Moon, Jesus Everywhere." Let me pray. Lord, I just thank you for this opportunity to come here and to share your message and share your love uh, with my brothers and sisters here today, Father. And I pray, Lord, that you would use me to speak to the people here and. The people that will watch this on YouTube and listen to it in different ways, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that you would touch their hearts and unlock hearts and minds in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, so I'm a big, you guys all know that I'm a big nerd. I'm a sci-fi thing. So anything to do with space catches my interest. And so uh, the title is very interesting, isn't it? Jesus, I'm like, where's that in the Bible, you know? And I, I, is Eric going crazy? And He's preaching heresy now, and uh, what, what's going on here? But what you may know is that something really amazing happened 50 years ago. It was actually, I don't want to say that it has been covered up by NASA, but it has been discouraged by NASA, possibly. So... Um, a lot of you guys know who Neil is. You guys heard of Neil, right? You guys heard you guys heard of Buzz, right? Yeah. But did you have you, did you know that there was a third yeah. astronaut? Yes. Yeah. And his name was Michael Collins. Yeah. And so you have Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins. I have to be as much of a space nerd as I am. I I really didn't recognize Michael Collins. You know. Uh, but we're going to come back to that because it's, it's very important uh, that we remember Michael Collins. Everyone heard of Neil and Buzz. I mean, that's a given. It's like, they're like pop star rock stars. But not many people know about Michael, right? We're going to come back to that. So 50 years ago, the, the crew of Apollo 11 landed on the moon. And something amazing happened there. What you may have not known is something took place that is very key to our Christian faith. Communion was taken on the moon. Did you guys know that they actually took communion on the moon? I never knew that. Jesus was on the moon. We, we, Buzz celebrated Christ on the moon. That, that, it was just instinct to him that this great achievement would be honored to Christ. And that is just, it's just mind blowing that you would ever think that something like that could happen with NASA. Often we think of NASA as, uh, you know, a very secularistic mindset, very scientific. I mean, it's a cool and great organization. So many cool things have come out of the Apollo programs and the space program. But you would never think that something like that would take place. Not only did they, they celebrate communion on the moon, but Buzz also read John 15, 5. So he read the, the scripture on the moon as well. So out of, I, I found this research, if you want to go back later, I, I want to give credit to where this information is coming from. It's from the Desert News article. And this also came out of the Guidepost magazine where they were, interviewing um, Buzz Aldrin. And so this is what the, he came out of in quotes. I poured the wine into the chalice our church had given to me. In one sixth gravity of the moon, the wine started to curl slowly and gracefully up the side of the cup. It was interesting to think that the very first liquid ever poured on the moon 
and the very first food eaten there were the communion elements. Mm. Good. That's, that's so amazing that, that even these scientists and these, these hotshot pilots knew that this was such a historical moment. And the first thing he thought of was, I need to have communion. Praise God. And so, like I said, this is also what was, what was spoken when uh, Buzz was there. He read out John 15, 5. I said, I am the vine, you are the the branches whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit mm -hmm. for you can do nothing without me he said Amen. unfortunately I, I really feel that over the years uh, you probably wouldn't see this today happen I don't know maybe I'm wrong maybe maybe NASA doesn't want you to know about what other astronauts say today but we have we've had this shift you know I think for the most part there's a small majority of uh, American Christians that, that remain in Christ. Unfortunately, I think a lot of us have broken away from that. And actually, uh, Buzz Aldrin wanted this experience to be shared live, broadcasted live to the, for the, the whole world to see. But at the time, there, there, there were, NASA was fighting this lawsuit with this atheist. I'm, I'm not going to even grace the name because uh, the Apollo 8 mission as well read from the book of Genesis <laughs> it's just so amazing what's out there these people that are giving glory to God in the NASA program excites me actually you know and um, so they were being sued so they thought maybe it's not a good idea to broadcast this live but man, I thought this is such an historical thing that no one knows about. I, I probably none of you knew that, huh? Yeah. Uh, I didn't know about it until just recently after reading this article. And I found this and it just popped up on my feet. I'm like, what? They celebrated communion on the moon? Oh my gosh, that's so cool! <laughs> I got so excited. Yes. Like I said, there has been this cultural shift, and, and as they were. Yeah interviewing Buzz, uh, he said he said in so many words, he said, man, if, if I had to do it again, you know, I, I don't know if I would have done it again, he said. He goes, because, okay, I, you know, there, there's Muslims, there's atheists, there's Christians, there's Buddhists, there's this and that. But here's the key thing that he says. He goes, but at the time, I felt that was the best way to do it, you know? I mean, even now you can see that there, there has been that bit of cultural shift. But he realized, even in his heart, even, even with all the things that are going on today, he realized still he felt like there was no better way to, to celebrate that uh, than to celebrate God's communion. And I'm excited for hopefully another manned mission to the moon. And, and I wouldn't be so exciting that another man or woman would honor Jesus for that adventure. Anyways, back to, let's go back to Michael. You know, and I was thinking about him and, and how I knew about Buzz Aldrin and, and these other guys, and, but, not, but not Michael. And, and I think, and if, if, if I, I dare say, many people didn't know who he is, and I might say that Michael Collins is probably one of the most vital members of the Apollo program. Without him, <laughs> they, they weren't getting back, you know. Without him, th th they would be stuck on the moon. And I'm thinking, man, and I thought that's like so many of us as Christians, you know. We think, am I really vital to God's kingdom, you know? Am I, am I really important to God? I mean, I'm, I'm kind of in the background. I'm, I'm kind of just sitting there. But in reality, I think we all have this important mission to apply for. The ground crew on Earth or the people that, that, that clean the rockets, we're all vital to God's mission, aren't we? I was thinking over the years how you guys were vital to my mission on the mission field. If it wasn't for your prayers or support, I wouldn't be able to fulfill the mission that God has placed in my heart. And so in the little things that you think you're doing, 
you're playing a vital key in that mission for saving souls when I was in Europe. So you take part in that. that that's your celebration. That's your grace that God's given you. And I think that is how we are able to reach the lost, is by doing the small things that, that are found in Christ. And the key is, in that, you think that you're not doing any good, is how can you reflect Christ? I had a, a friend that got saved. She was from Afghanistan, and she was Muslim, and she became a Christian. And... Uh, she sacrificed so much, and I'll, I'll never forget her. You know, uh, we had these work duties in college, and uh, we'd do different things. And I was on the cleaning crew, and we had to go clean windows and doing stuff. And, and one day she looked at me, it was really funny. I don't know why she had this impression. And she said, uh, we're not the sun, you know? You're not the sun. And she says, but you are the moon. And, and the moon reflects the light of the sun. And I'm like, whoa, that is super deep, actually. That is so cool. I, I'm not the glory, I'm not God. I'm not this, I'm not a glorious savior. You know, I'm not the beautiful sun that gives light to earth. But I am like the moon that reflects the glory of God. And that, 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 that was so, so powerful for me in my life. Because it also brings a lot of a lot of freedom too. Because my job is not to to save souls. My my job is just to reflect the love and passion of Christ. It's the Holy Spirit's job to save souls. But if I am if I am not reflecting that light, then I'm not doing my job. And so it is like. I am not the sun, but I am the moon, and I am not Jesus Christ, I'm just his son, then I, my job is to reflect the Father's love, to reflect the love of Christ. And I'll never forget her, and I'll never forget those words. And so in the smallest things that we do, the smallest gestures in your eyes, whether you say, hello, I know I've said, shared this before and it seems so simple, but I've seen it change people's day, you know? I was sharing with you all the things that were going on and the things that I've been doing, and I'm just trying to, my best to live like Christ would, even in the simplest times, and even in the simplest ways. A, a small gesture like letting someone use your van or truck, maybe be like, this is no big deal to me, is a huge deal to someone else saying hello, saying God loves you, or even saying, hey, can I pray for you? Even if they say no, may make the, a difference that, that will impact their lives that you'll never see. The, the saddest thing I think of is that most of the stuff that we do and say will probably never see the impact. And it's sad in the fact that you wanna see the things that God has or, or the things that people are doing. And I think that's so important that you do, even though we don't see those things, that we continue to share the love of Christ. A lot of you guys know that I'm a big movie nerd. I, I, and I'm always careful. I never endorse movies. But God really speaks through film to me in little clips. And I was watching this, I was watching this uh, movie called The Gladiator. I, I, don't, I can't recommend this movie. It's, it's, uh, it's pretty tough movie, but it was a reality of the times in the Gladiator Coliseum. Coliseum? I didn't see that right. Anyways, the stadiums. And there's a scene where the main hero is speaking to the soldiers, and they're, they're, they're about to go off to war. And he says to them, what you do here will echo in eternity. And I think, whoa, that's so awesome. I go, it's so true. What we do here on earth will echo in eternity. And I would say what we don't do here on earth will also echo in eternity. And I was thinking to myself, the smallest things I do in sharing the love of God will echo in eternity. Because you 
are displaying that one little seed into someone's heart. It will grow into a beautiful flower. It will blossom into fruit that will bring people to salvation. And if it brings them to salvation, that will echo in eternity. I remember in college too, I, I would go, uh, I'd go caving. I used to love it. We'd go get our flashlights, we'd go deep, deep into the caves. And, and it's fun, you know, playing around, looking for bats and making sure we don't fall over, you know, into some abyss. That would be really bad, you know? And we keep going deeper, deeper into the cave until, you know, you couldn't see any light from where we came, you know? Generally speaking, it usually happens pretty fast, but we'd go way deep into the cave and then we'd all turn off our lights. And it'd be so pitch black. You can't see your hand in front of your face. It's super, super dark. And I was thinking, wow, that's it's pretty dark in here. Pretty freaky. You know, you, ever, you hear the slightest noise bloop, bloop, from the water dripping. And, and you, it's dark. And what's so fascinating about that is just a little bit of light just pierces through the darkness. Just that little bit of light makes the whole cave seem to light up in some sense, you know. And I was thinking, that's like us. We're in this, we're in this world, and it's full, full of darkness. And we, we, we have, we have this. We don't feel like, you know. I don't know how Michael felt. I don't know if he felt vital to the mission. I'm sure he did, but you know, maybe other people didn't don't think about him. And, but but he was so vital, and and your part too is that maybe you don't feel vital, you know, in the things that we do and say. But that little bit of light in a dark, dark world pierces the darkness. The the little gesture that you do, we're we're constantly touching people's lives and transforming them. And I, and I, I told you last week that I made this new decision just to be as positive as I can and and do what I can to reflect God's love. And it's not easy, you know, because sometimes I remember that the, a couple of days ago I was, I was driving down the road and uh, this guy cuts me off, you know, that flesh comes up and you don't want to be like Christ. You want to blare on your horn and, and uh, wave your hand around, you know, and it's not really what God wants us to do. I mean, I, I would love for us to, to pierce the darkness. And, and I was, as I was preparing, I, Matthew 5 came to mind. In Matthew 5, 13 to 16, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer any good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its own stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. <clears throat> in the same way, let your light shine before all men that they may see your goodness, your deeds, and praise your Father in heaven. So if we're thinking that what we do doesn't matter, we're wrong. Because that smallest light pierces that darkness. That, that, that smallest <clears throat> gesture unlocks people's hearts wherever we go. And it's, it's not easy. At times, it's very hard. And, and as I was, uh, I don't want to say trained over a new leaf, but I was saying as my fire was ignited underneath my soul. I feel like it seemed like everything would go wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, it seems like here I am trying to do more and, and be more proactive. And it seems like the world's like crushing down on me with this problem, that problem, this issue. And I keep pushing through. I'm, I'm just pushing through. I'm saying, no, I'm going to let my light shine because I don't know what I do that may change someone's heart. You know, I, I want I want to see people's lives change, and and people think often as you know, 
when I was in the mission field, oh yeah, it's so easy for you to share the gospel and it's so, uh, everything is easy going. No, it's not, sometimes as, as we get closer to doing the things that, that God wants us to do, it gets tougher. <laughs> it gets tougher. And I, I once heard uh, an atheist say yeah, that oh, Christianity is just a, just a crutch. It's just a crutch. And I'm like, no, no, it's not a crutch. I go, it's a stretcher. Christianity is a stretcher. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and, you know, they're like, what? You know, like, and I recently changed that to my post uh, on my Twitter feed. I go, yeah, you, everyone says uh, Christianity is a crush. No, it's a stretcher. It gets you through the hardest times in life. It's not easy. I remember I used to even preach, ah, oh, yeah, give your life to God and everything is easy and good. Yippee. That, that, that's when you're a, a 13 year old and your mom and dad are taking care of everything and everything is good, you know. No, it's tough, you know. Things happen. And man, Jesus is my stretcher. The cross is my salvation, my freedom. Even through the, the darkest times. And uh, let me tell you a story, if I can. I, I was. Uh, it was a, last week was raining. I don't know if you guys remember last week. It was just pouring and pouring. And, and I was supposed to meet someone, and I was in a hurry, and I see this guy walking down the street in the rain, and it's just pouring. And I go, oh, maybe I'll, I thought he was going my way. I thought, oh, maybe I'll stop and give him a ride or something. But then I see he's going the other way, and I have to go past him. I'm like, oh, man, you know, I go, Man, if it was rain, I'd want someone to give me a ride, you know? And so I just, I, I flip a Yui and I, I come back around and I slow down. And usually this road is, you know, you know, people are coming and all of a sudden there's no one there. I'm like, okay, no excuses. So I slow down, I, I roll down my window, it's raining. I go, hey man, I go, do you want a ride? He goes, yeah! <laughs> he comes across the street, gets in, and I go, I don't think now I got him where I want him. I can share the gospel with this guy, you know. And so, and then, so I was like, oh man, thank you. And so we start driving down the road. I go, I go, where do you want to go? And this, we were in O'Fallon. And I go, man, he's probably gonna say he needs to go somewhere. And I'm like, I'm like, okay, I'll take him to Collinsville. He wants to go to Collinsville. Like, you know, it'd be a great opportunity to share the gospel with the guy. And he goes, yeah, I'm just if you can get me to a bus stop. And there's a couple of bus stops that were a little closer. He goes. Well, I know there's one by the mall, and so I think I, I get more time if I take him to the mall, you know? So, it's, I, so I drive the guy to the mall, and I just start saying, he's like, hey, man, what's going on in your life? And here's the thing that I've been doing now, too, and you guys feel free to steal any of my techniques. They don't always work, and people might think you're crazy, and this happened to me at Lowe's the other day, too, here in uh, Edwardsville. And um, I say, hey, what's... What, what what's new that God's doing in your life, you know? And either I'll get up, oh, I don't believe in God, or like, oh, well, this happened or this happened. He goes, well, man, yeah. And he started sharing with me, yeah, my girlfriend left me, kicked me out of my house, and uh, my car's broken, and I, 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 I'm looking for, I, I just got this job, and, you know, and everything seems to be falling apart. I go, bro. I go, I know exactly what you're talking about. Well, I, my wife's not kicking me out, but I understand the, the, the struggle that's going on. I go, I go, and I told him, you know, you know, just being a Christian doesn't always make it easy, but God can help you through these steps and, and meet, meet your needs and, and, uh, and take care of you, man. And he's like, I talk to people real casually, unless they're way older than me. But so, anyways, um, and I say, hey, is it all right if I pray for you? As we're driving, he goes, yeah, yeah, man, pray for me, you know, and so I just started praying for him and asking that God would transform his life and that uh, the Lord would move in his life and, and meet his needs, you know, and I finally got to the mall, <laughs> the slow way, and um, I said, hey, I, you probably thinking like, man, this guy got me stuck in this car, and he goes, no, 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 it's good, it's, uh, I appreciate the ride, and, and I appreciate, uh, uh, your words and I said, "Hey, I really mean when I said that that, that God loves you and, and uh, he, he wants it to, to to do something in your life." And I'm thinking so so often in my life, it, it, I can't 
that I've been in a situation where I said, I can't be bothered. You know, I don't want to be bothered. And you have to use wisdom. You can't just pick up any hitchhiker on the street, obviously. And you can't, you know, it'll be different for different people. And, but taking that time, you, you, you don't know what that little bit of light will do. Your body, you guys are all vital to the mission that, that we have here on earth. We all have a mission, and it's to live like Christ, and be like Christ, and do what Christ did. And often, I've been watching this evangelist on TV, on YouTube, and he's saying, I'm just trying to live the normal Christian life. It's just normal. And I've, I've, been, hearing, I've been hearing stories about how different people have... Uh, just experiencing cool stuff happens, and it's like, I'm like, hey, can we go to your uh, your outreach, healing outreach, to the mall? He goes, I'm like, well, we don't have it, but no, I heard you guys have no. And they, and they thought about, it, oh no, no, these are just our our church members going to the, the mall and just praying for people, you know, and, and they're just this is happening. I'm just living my my Christian life. I mean, how amazing would it be if every Christian in the world would just live out that that life that it would be willing to just to be bold for Christ you know to be fools for him half the people you talk to you probably never see again anyway so why do you care you know we're, we're so bold for everything else you know it's like it's so easy for me to talk about films with everyone I see someone with a uh, a Superman shirt I'm like oh dude did you see that movie da 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 whatever and, and now I'm just like, I try to relate it into uh, any way I can to share the gospel. Hey, man, do you know who the greatest superhero is, man? It's Jesus, you know? And so I, I just, I try, to, I try to share the, I mean, that's what Paul did. He took popular culture of the time and shared the gospel. And, and, that, and that's what I do, you know? And so I want to hear you guys uh, tell cool stories like that next week, you know, just... <laughs> To share what God has done in just the simplest ways, and you know, and I mean, I guess we all have to use wisdom. But I, I've always never really cared, I guess, about what my boss said or what anyone said. I'm, I'm going to share the gospel. You can fire me if you want, but that's just me. Uh, I'm not done encouraging anyone to try to get fired. But you know, if the opportunity opens, then you, you'll be able to unlock hearts. Trust me. Trust me. You will. That, that smallest light pierces the darkness. And, I, and I, as I was thinking, as we start to do these crazier things, it gets harder and it doesn't seem like it gets easier and you, you want to do more for Christ. I remember one day I was going to go out and have breakfast and just spend some time alone and read my Bible and do all the good Christian things to do. And, and then uh, my car breaks down and this happens and, and I'm just Am I under attack? Is, is Satan after me? Yes. Is my car? Did Satan break my car? Probably not. Is this old or whatever? And sometimes it just just life happens. It's just life. You know, we live in this world too. You know, and but the attitude is different. You know, Jesus is our stretcher. He's able to get me through with a better attitude than my car broke. I don't know if the devil broke my car. Sometimes it feels like it, you know? But 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 it's Jesus that brings that stretcher into your life. And it just, even as I speak, it brings healing to my heart too, you know? Um, yeah, it's just that, that I repeat myself because it's so important. Like the smallest things that we're doing all around us brings that light and brings that transformation. Who knows? Maybe when you share the gospel with someone and they get saved and they're a young kid, maybe they're the next Billy Graham. Wouldn't that be amazing? And, you, and you'll never know. It may be 20 years from now that, uh, that it happens, or 30 years, or 40 years, you know? I remember I was never a big uh, track person handing out tracks. I, I despised it. I despised it. Because it's so impersonal, you know? I'd rather talk to people. But... I, I had to be put in my place because I was talking to this young Australian guy and that's how he got saved. And I'm like, okay, I'm wrong, God. And apparently tracks work all the time. And so, you know, if you, whatever people do, that's, that's cool by me as long as you're doing something, you know. 
And this this guy said, yeah, um, someone gave me a track. And I remember they were being a really nice person. I threw it on my desk, didn't look for it for it at months, years. Then one day I looked at it and I got saved. And I was like, wow. That, just that little bit of light, that little bit of kindness uh, changed his life. And I would like to close with this verse from Galatians 6.9. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. We, we, so many times we want to give up. It's just too hard. Or these obstacles get into our way where they, they break us down and, and, and we lose hope. But, but God is saying, don't give up. Don't be weary of doing good. Because I get frustrated too, and it seems like, why should I? Why should I do anything else? I should just give up. But God's saying, "Don't give up," because there's someone out there that needs you. There's someone that needs that specific word, that the kind gesture, that that hug, that 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 bit of love that you have to give. Don't take your light. Don't put it underneath a bowl. Let it shine brightly. I mean, we have seen this this massive culture shift in the last. I was talking to Randy. We've seen a massive culture shift in the last 15 years that. That I don't, I don't even recognize my own country. I remember even me being on the mission field about 15 years ago, coming back, it doesn't even feel like the same country that I left. It seems so different. So if we all start hiding because we're afraid of what repercussions happen or our, our political thoughts, if we're, not, if we're not sharing and being that light, then it's just gonna get worse and worse. But if we, if we stay bold and and we let our light shine, then things will change, people will change. And, and I'm praying for revival to change our nation because uh, it's, it's only going to be Jesus. It's not going to be a politician. It's not going to be a senator. It's not going to be all these different people. It's going to be Christ. He's the only solution. Amen. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord, that we can be bold for you, that, that our, our, we wouldn't hide our light underneath the bowl, Lord, that we would stay strong and firm and that we would be bold for you like a lion, Father. That there be no fear, no, no anxiety, no guilt, but we would be bold as lions, Father. And bless everyone here with uh, your love and your grace. And let them be bold for you. Let them be uh, vital to the mission, just like, just like Michael was vital for bringing the Apollo mission back to earth, Father. That we are vital to seeing the kingdom come here on earth in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 That's all.